You know what? Some things are better off left in the past. Hey guys, Stipe here with my list of seven mistreated cars that should have simply stayed dead. Let's go. Starting with the BMW 8 Series, as impressive as it can be, this isn't it. What we're looking at here is a successor to the 6 Series, but with a crystal gear lever and a higher number on the trunk lid, so uh, I guess they can put a higher price tag on it too. Seriously, the shape is the same, the engine options too, and they want us to believe that they brought back this. Look at it! This was a proper standout model, a true halo car not an overpriced sixer. And don't even get me started on the M8. It never went on sale, but BMW did make a secret pre-production prototype. It's just that they kept it locked and hidden away from the public eye for almost two decades. Kind of like that basement dad. And like him, this OG M8 was a real monster too. He thought hypercars like the Bugatti EB110, the Jaguar XJ220, or even the Vector W8 were the top dogs. <laughs> Please. The power of the Bavarian Brute was unmatched. Oh, and I, I, I know what you're thinking. Oh, but what about the Big Mac F1? Okay, sure. What about it? If you haven't figured it out by now, the M8 would have been the most powerful car on sale, and for a very long time, too. Like I said, it was a monster. Now contrast that with its modern reincarnation. That one isn't even the most powerful BMW. No wonder the sales are failing. Moving on with the Dodge Dart, a car that got very different with each new generation. It started its life as a full-size model with lots of chrome and fins, then a mid-size that had the face of the conjoined twins, and in its final form, an affordable compact too. Basically, it went through more changes than Caitlyn Jenner, and as with Caitlyn, one thing remained. That's a pin. <clears throat> uh, the V8, V8 remained. What's more, the latest, smallest, and most affordable generation went crazy with its engine offerings. You could have the 440 Magnum, the 426 Hemi, or finally the 340 Demon. That, by the way, was the first Demon ever, and it was fast too, right up until the you-know-what happened. This squeezed the life out of all fun engines, and without those, the dart withered and died to oud. But 40 years later, it was back as a rebadged Fiat. Oh well, no one in 2012 expected an affordable compact to have a rear wheel drive or a V8. Those days were long gone. But at least they could have given it that SRT4 engine from the Neon that it replaced. Maybe even bring back the demon name. No! They didn't. What they did do is create a car for non-car people. You know, the kind of car that makes you wish you were walking instead. And as before, without a fun factor, the Dart died. Rather quickly. Good. I say good because you know how that saying goes. If you're going to fail, fail fast. Which is something that Mercedes should have done with their Maybach revival. Although the errors of their ways were obvious to anyone with functioning eyes, Mercedes pushed on blindly for 16 long years before their accountants finally said, Okay, that's enough. So what exactly went wrong? Oh, many things, starting with the name itself. Back in the 1930s, when Maybach was making opulent cars for whoever was the Great Gatsby of the Third Reich, that name meant something. But 60 years later, it was just forgotten. That is not how you go against the biggest names in the business, Bentley and the Rolls, with a name that means nothing. Then Mercedes based it on their S-Class platform, which all by itself isn't a bad thing. The Continental GT is a VW Phaeton underneath, and this Rolls-Royce is a rebodied 7 Series. But at least they look different. Same, same, but different. I mean, what would the point be of making a higher level product if no one can tell it apart? And with Maybach, anyone barely could. It was a $400,000 car that looked almost exactly like the one that cost you just a quarter of that. That's a fail and proof the saying, the suit maketh the man. Works on cars too. Well, duh. And then there's the Alfa Romeo Spider. It was an easygoing kind of car, focused more on making you feel good and look good rather than going fast. It was, as the Italians would say, la dolce vita on wheels. 
This hedonistic whiff about it is exactly what kept it so popular and in production for nearly three decades. Think about what that means. You could have both father and son buying the same brand new car, some 25 years apart. So you can imagine how everyone got excited when they heard that the new one is finally coming out. And then they saw it. What the hell is even that? Although Alpha was adamant that this is the new Spider, clearly it was just a convertible GTV. And look, I've got nothing against that car, but it doesn't look right, and nor does it drive right either. This was a much sportier car with larger, more powerful engines and a wrong wheel drive too. I'm sorry, but that is not Dolce Vita. This is. It's called the Duetto Tanta, and it's possibly the prettiest concept car ever made. But the good stuff wasn't just on the outside. Underneath that jaw-dropping body was a Mazda Miata. It was bound to go into production. But then, at the last moment, the FCA bosses decided to use this MX-5 platform to bring back the Fiat 124 instead. Okay, that's nice too, but what about the Alpha Spider? And no, this isn't it either. Sticking with the Italians, the Maserati Gran Turismo. Despite its many flaws, the old one was my favorite car ever. Yeah, it was outdated, it was breaking down a lot, but it was fast enough. It looked better than anything south of a million bucks, and the V8 noise was so good that it was classified as an aphrodisiac. I'm not making this up. There was some research done on how car sounds can affect the sexual arousal, and only Maserati managed to moisten the panties of all the women it tested. Needless to say, it works on us guys, too. Oh, I've had a crisis. And now, let's hear the new one. Yep, this one's electric because of course it is. And before you say, oh, but it has 1,200 horsepower. Who cares? What's the use of that? So you can accelerate faster? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought the car was called Gran Turismo, not Drag Racismo. I want to recreate the intro of the Italian job movie, not engage in a penis measuring contest. So F off with your electrification. And while you're at it, you can take that twin turbo V6 option with you too. It may have more horses than the previous V8, but it sounds nowhere near as good. In short, preferring the new Gran Turismo to the old one is like preferring a jackhammer over a Pavarotti, simply because the jackhammer generates more decibels. And lastly, the looks. There are just a few changes, but they are all worse. So F off to this Kloss guy too, for ruining what was the perfect Pin and Farina design. Yeah, f that guy. By the way, do you know which car is widely considered to be the first muscle car? This, the Pontiac GTO. Well, actually, that's a Pontiac Le Mans with a go fast optional package called the GTO. But it had a profound effect on not just the car, but the whole industry too. Suddenly, every brand in America was producing cars on steroids and pitting them against each other in a war between the lights. This high octane frenzy lasted for almost a decade until the oil crisis put an end to wasteful engines. Without those, proper muscle cars simply died out, never to be seen again. But then, at the turn of the millennium, they were back. I'm back. Not just in the name, like this pathetic attempt on the 1980s Charger, but in the proper shape and power level too. I'm talking about the all new but retro looking Mustang, Challenger, and Camaro, which remain mostly the same and in production until today. Interestingly, the GTO was back too, even before the aforementioned trio, but no one cared about it. And it was dead after just two years. But why? Well, just look at it. Retro styling was in, and the GTO didn't have any. Actually, it still had the same body as the Holden Monaro, on which it was based. Shame, because otherwise, this was a really good muscle car. Good car? Good car. Good car. Good car. Yeah. Now, before I reveal my number one, here are some honorable mentions. See if you can guess them. And at the top spot, we have the new Kuntash. It might seem kind of Karen of me to complain about a $3 million Lambo, but I don't know, something is just off. And I bet that many of you feel the same way about it too. To me, the new Countach is just not Countach-y enough, if that's a word. Here's what I mean. 
when the original one first came out, it was a genuine, holy fucking shit, look at that thing, kind of a moment. In fact, that's exactly what the word Kuntash means in some northern Italian dialect. Come to think of it, this must be the only car intentionally named after a curse word. And no, the Subaru Forester Ultimate Customized Kit Special doesn't count. Anyway, the Lambo. As time went by, it didn't sit still until the people got used to it. Worse, got bored of it. No, over time it got more power, grew outrageously large tires, and sprouted an extreme aero kit that did absolutely nothing. It was for shock and awe only, just like the rest of the car. And now, be honest with me, can you say the same about the new one? Hardly, because we've already seen this 40 years ago. We're used to it. Like a horror game that uses the same jump scare over and over again. Enough of this shit! It loses the effect. And that's why the new Countach is not countach enough. If Lambo really wanted to make a car worthy of such a name, they should have put this one into production. Anyway, that's all for me today. See you in the next one.